Martha Gellhorn. She was an American novelist, travel writer, and journalist. Uh, she's who no matter report on. She was uh, one of the best known uh, war correspondents, like best female war correspondent of the 20th century. Um, she was born November 8th, 1908 in St. Louis, Missouri. Her father was a doctor and he was a progressive um, guy. He followed the progressive movement and stuff like that. Her mother was a suffragist and a social reformer. She went to rallies and protests with her mom um, growing up all the time. And she only had one brother named George Alexander Gellhorn. She went to a covenant school. For those that don't know, it like involves nuns and people like that. Uh, but her father pulled her, pulled her out of it when he discovered they were studying female anatomy with a textbook. Gellhorn was transferred to a progressive co-educational school then, which her mother co-founded. She attended Bryn Mawr College in Philadelphia. Originally, she went majoring in English, but changed it to French. And then she eventually just dropped out completely in 1927 to pursue a career in journalism. Her first job was with the New Republic. And from there, it's just really where she, her journalism started. Her second job was a, a crime reporter for a local newspaper in Albany, New York. Gellhorn soon moved to Paris at the age of 21 with just $75, where she found her French background would come in handy. And she joined the United Press Bureau, where she became a war correspondent. And while she was in Paris, she became involved in the pacifist movement. And what I learned is the pacifist movement lasted for a span of time, and she covered it for a couple of years. In 1931, Gellhorn traveled the American Southwest as a reporter uh, for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. During this time, she wrote a novel called What Mad Pursuit, uh, 1934. It was about a cynical female reporter who had many love affairs. And a lot of people say that this character she wrote about was much like herself. The novel included her experiences from her time in Paris. She returned to the United States in the 1930s where she was hired as an investigator for the Federal Emergency Relief Administration. She met Harry Hopkins, President Roosevelt's confidant, and talked her way into a job with the New Deal. And if you forgot what the New Deal was, the New Deal was um, Roosevelt's reform on how to fix the Great Depression. When she did this, she was only 25 years old and became the youngest of a team of six journalists on the job. With the Federal Emergency Relief Administration, she was sent around the country to document the impact of the Great Depression. Her reports caught the eye of First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, and uh, when they met, they just became very close friends. In 1936, Gellhorn turned what she had witnessed from the Depression into another fiction novel called The Trouble I've Seen. The Trouble I've Seen, um, it's one of her most famous ones, really, uh, it sold really well, and I mean, got a lot of good critiques on it. Very, very well written. In 1936, Gellhorn met a um, famous American writer, Ernest Hemingway. And within months of knowing each other, the two just got up and traveled together to Spain to cover the rise of fascism and the Spanish Civil War for Collier's Weekly. Like I said, she studied fascism, or she followed the fascism movement for a really long time. In 1940, Gellhorn and Hemingway got married. Hemingway dedicated his Spanish Civil War novel called For Whom the Bells Toll to her, and he wrote it in the same year that they got married. Um, she's really known for covering wars. Like I said, she's one of the best female war correspondents of the 20th century, and I'll keep saying it probably. Um, so this is with her time during World War II and the Vietnam War. Um, she covered a lot that went on with it. She covered first the Blitz on London. And then four years after her marriage with Hemingway, Gellhorn was sent to Western Europe to cover World War II. Um, she was really known for her bravery. And in 1944, 
she stowed away on a hospital ship to report on the D-Day landing. Uh, she was able to report from the front line. She had befriended um, the soldiers that you know she spent time with and writing about, and they just let her on the ship, and she was able to, you know, get that great story that she needed about that. The next year after that, she entered Dachau with American troops for the liberation of the concentration camp. And that account was a landmark piece of journalism. Uh, it was one of her most famous writings that she, that she wrote, and it, it was just a very big deal. In 1939, she covered Russia's war against Finland. In 1940, same year they got married, she trekked across China with her husband, Hemingway. And then five years after marriage, she got a divorce. And what's funny about that is, well, it's actually not funny, but uh, Hemingway was married three times and Martha was the only wife to leave him. And the rest, he, he left them. And it apparently ended really, really badly. Um, I don't know. He had a lot of bad things to say about her and like, it was kind of just reciprocated and it, it was just bad. In 1966, uh, Gellhorn covered the Vietnam War, and she found this war to be very disturbing and horrific. She described it being full of victims on both sides of the battle lines. Gellhorn got married a third time to Tom Matthews, the top editor of Time magazine, but she ended it because she felt that, quote, marriage life was boring. Uh, I just assumed that she, where she traveled so much as marriage kind of wasn't in her, her realm of things to keep up with. You know, marriage is hard, I hear, and you just it, has, it takes time. And she just really didn't have time with her career. Uh, but in the meantime, she did adopt a son in Italy uh, after the war and raised him in Mexico. A lot of accounts say she raised him all over the place because she uh, traveled everywhere, but primarily in Mexico, I guess. In the 1980s, she traveled extensively, writing about the wars in El Salvador and Nicaragua. At the age of 81, she traveled and wrote about the U.S. invasion of Panama. In the mid-1990s, her last trip was to Brazil to write about the street children. Uh, this is the last significant article of her, uh, her death, and it was very well written. It was very, um, very clear, and very. it was just her telling the truth. She was known for telling the truth. She was known for writing what she saw. She didn't sugarcoat anything. She just wrote what she saw. Uh, she was dying of cancer. Uh, they never said what kind of cancer she was dying from, what she had. Um, it didn't take her life but because she took her own life because of it in 1998. Um, she died at the age of 89. As I said, she was an American novelist as well. She was highly praised for the weather in Africa she wrote in 1988. And three novellas set on the continent um, and the novellas of Martha Gellhorn. In Gellhorn's lifetime, she wrote five novels, had two collections of short stories and 14 novellas. Uh, these stories pictured Depression-era American life with great clarity. And she was an expert at capturing the shame and loss of dignity that sprung from powerlessness. She took criticism from political conservatives who she said was quote, a left-leaning dilettante whose writing was often didactic and sentimental. She was also criticized for her journalism being stylistically too much like fiction and her novels being too much like journalism. She was at a lose-lose with that one. Martha Gellhorn is arguably, like I said, the best-known female war correspondent of the 20th century. She was a fiery, passionate, brave journalist and she now has an award named in her honor called the Martha Gellhorn Prize for Journalism that is awarded to, quote, the kind of reporting that exposes an unpalatable truth and gets beneath establishment propaganda or what Gellhorn would describe as official drivel. Um, that's all I have. Um, Martha Gellhorn, she just really contributed to war correspondence. She was on the front line of every battle. She was there she befriended the soldiers and she looked for what you know what people didn't look for she told the stories of this, the troops and not really just the world overall that's all i got